Hi everyone, in this video we're going to talk about the congestion control aspect of TCP. Now first, why do we need congestion control in the internet? Note that there are multiple flows in the internet and the goal is to make sure that each and every flow gets its fair share. That is, a single flow cannot hog the entire bandwidth that is available. So this is why TCP implements congestion control. So let's see how TCP achieves this congestion control. TCP achieves congestion control by making sure that the sender increases its transmission rate, which is controlled by the window size or CWND, which is the congestion window size, by probing for the usable bandwidth in the network. As long as there is usable bandwidth in the network, it increases its transmission rate slowly. And after it has used up all this usable bandwidth and there is a loss that occurs, what it does is it immediately reacts to this loss. Now what TCP perceives each and every loss in the internet as a result of congestion. That's how it perceives each loss to occur. So what it does is whenever there is an RTT that's received, that is an acknowledgement comes back, it increases the congestion window size by one MSS. Now as soon as a loss is detected, what it does is it cuts down the congestion window size in half. So as a result, what we can see is the window size provides a sawtooth behavior over time. That is, it increases linearly, and as soon as there is a loss, the window size is cut in half. So let's see uh, congestion control in a little bit more detail. So what uh, the TCP window, uh, the, what TCP has is this window, which is CWND. Now what CWND captures is the set of bytes that have been sent but not yet acknowledged and that is what it is trying to to capture so the in this figure what we have is the green portion tells us what the last byte that has been acknowledged the yellow portion captures the bytes that have been sent but have not yet been acknowledged so they are in flight now the blue uh, bytes represent the bytes that could be sent. Now the gray ones represent the bytes that cannot be sent because uh, taking the yellow and the blue into account, we have taken the entire window size into consideration. Now for every acknowledgement that is received, the window size is going to move forward and hence we have a sliding window which continuously moves forward and the congestion window size is essentially uh, the last byte sent minus the last byte that is acknowledged. That is what the congestion window size is going to be. So the congestion window size is dynamic. It is a function of the perceived network congestion and it increases and decreases as and when TCP perceives congestion in the network. And because of this kind of varying net window size, what we have is the rate that is achieved by TCP is roughly given by the window size, that is CWND, by the round trip time in bytes per second. So now that we have looked at TCP's congestion control and its principles behind it, let's talk about the two phases of TCP's congestion control. The first one is called the slow start phase. Now the slow start phase is actually a misnomer in some way. This is because this the slow start phase happens when the connection begins, but the rate actually increases exponentially until the uh, first loss event. So initially, TCP starts off very conservatively and the CWND is one MSS. And after that, the CWND is going to double for every RTT that is received. So initially, it is going to ramp up very, very quickly. The name slow start occurs because the initial rate is slow, but the ramp up is exponentially fast. Now, after it has reached a particular threshold, uh, the window size, I mean, what TCP is going to do is it's going to take that additive increase behavior where the window size is going to increase very slowly. So let's look at all these things in greater detail. So. What is going to happen, as I just mentioned, is there is going to be a slow start phase where the window size is going to increase exponentially. 
After that, it's going to reach some threshold and then it is going to increase much more slowly. That is in an additive manner. And at some point, a loss is going to occur. Now, the loss can be due to two reasons, as we've studied. The first one is due to timeout. Now, as soon as there is a loss due to timeout, most versions of TCP are going to set the congestion window size to one. Okay? That is what is going to happen because a timeout means there is some kind of congestion. So it set, uh, sets the window size to one. And from there, the window size is again going to grow exponentially as it happens in a slow start phase till a particular threshold is reached. Beyond that point, it is going to grow linearly. Now, sometimes losses can also occur due to three duplicate acknowledgements. And in these cases, TCP, depending on the version of TCP that we are dealing with, can react very, very differently. So over the years, many different versions of TCP have been proposed. We are going to look at two versions here. One is uh, TCP Tahoe and TCP Reno. And if we are studying TCP Reno, what happens is if there is a three duplicate acknowledgements, it reacts a little more, uh, it does not react that drastically. What it does is it just cuts the window size by half. That is what uh, we studied, we looked at earlier where we have this additive slot tooth behavior. And, and from there it grows linearly. But TCP Tahoe, what it does is irrespective of how the loss occurs, it is going to set the congestion window size to one. Now, let us consider TCP's behavior. So in this figure here, what we have is how, how TCP's window size changes over time and how it varies or moves from the slow start phase to the congestion avoidance phase and how it deals with loss. So this slide actually brings together all the different aspects of congestion control that we have been talking about in the last few slides. So initially, let's focus on the blue line, which is TCP Tahoe. So what happens is the TCP congestion window size is actually going to increase exponentially for each and every acknowledgement that is received. So initially the window size is one. So it is going to send that uh, one segment and wait for the acknowledgement. As soon as the uh, acknowledgement is received, it is going to increase the window size to now two. So it's going to send out twos of these segments. Now, if it receives the acknowledgement, for both of these uh, segments, then it's going to increase the window size to four. Now after four, it's going to send out four segments and then it's going to wait. As soon as it receives the acknowledgement for all those four segments, it's, the window size is now going to grow to eight. Now at this point, it has reached a threshold. It's called the SSS thresh. It's a variable and let's assume that for now, the SSS thresh is set to eight. So at this point, TCP Tahoe has reached this threshold. At this point, the slow start phase is going to end and that additive increase multiplicative decrease behavior is going to kick in, which we refer to as congestion avoidance. Now at this phase, TCP has, there has a window size of eight. So it's going to send out eight segments. Now, if it receives acknowledgements for all these eight segments, its window size is just going to increase by one. Compared to the slow start phase where this window size would have doubled, here it just increases by one. So it increases from eight to nine. So now it's going to send nine segments and wait for their acknowledgements. And if it receives the acknowledgement back for each and every one out of those uh, segments, it's going to increase the window size to 10. And this process is going to continue. Now let's look at oh, the window size of 12. Now when the windows, when it receives the uh, when it reaches the window size 12, it's going to send out 12 segments and it's going to wait for the acknowledgement for these segments. Let's assume that one of those segments gets lost and the, and the loss can occur due to a timeout or due to three duplicate acknowledgements. But if you're concentrating on TCP Tahoe, the blue line here, it's not going to care. And what it's going to do is it's going to get its window size back to one. So for, we can see that it is, the window size goes all the way from 12 to one. Then now it's again going to enter the slow start phase. So the window size is again going to grow exponentially. And what you will notice is that the SSS thresh has changed from this value of eight to the value of six. Now, why does this happen? So this SSS thresh is set to half of the value when the loss is detected. 
So the loss was detected when the window size was 12. So this SSS thresh shows new value is half of 12, which is 6. So when there's no as you can see, the window size is increasing in the slow start phase. So it increases from 1 at time 9 to 2 at time 10 to 4 at time 11. And at time 12 in uh, TCP Tahoe, what happens is the SSS thresh is cap, uh, the caps the value of them, the window size during the slow start phase. So from 4, it actually gets stopped at 6 and does not go to 8. Beyond that, once again, it increases linearly. Now let's look at TCP Reno, the other version of TCP. Now I just want to point out here that there are hundreds of different versions of TCP available. These are the two that we're going to study in this course. Now in TCP Reno, it reacts differently to loss. Now if the loss is due to a timeout, it's going to behave exactly like Tahoe. That is, it's going to drop the window size all the way to 1. However, if the loss is due to three duplicate acknowledgements, it does not react so aggressively. Instead, it is going to drop the window size to the SSS thresh, and from there, it is going to increase linearly. That is shown by this black one. With this, I'll complete my discussion on the congestion control aspect of TCP. Thank you for watching.